Heyo, welcome back everybody to the Hobbit Minecraft Survival Guide. Guys, thank you so much for making it back again. I have so much in store for you guys today. I have so many treats. I have been building forever, but I'm really proud of this one. Do you know the tale of Gimli Glowing Sun and how he became the Lord of the Glittering Caves of Helm's Deep. Well, guess what? Today, we're going to talk about it. We're going to build it. It's one of my finest builds yet. I cannot wait to show you guys what I've got inside here. You can kind of get some little peeks. I'm giving away too much here. I'm giving away too much. I'm giving away too much. So, uh, let's go ahead and run outside here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the entryway. We're going to do a little time lapse, and then I'm going to walk you guys through the glittering cave. So if you like this content, if you like Gimli, Glowing Sun, go ahead and smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button, just like you're smashing a few orc heads off with your finest battle axe. But that's enough for now. Let's get started. In The Lord of the Rings, The Two Tower, in the chapter, The Road to Isengard, Gimli and Legolas are having a conversation about all the wondrous things that they've seen so far. But there's a particular part of the chapter I'd like to read which really gives some beautiful details about the glittering caves. Strange are the ways of men, Legolas. Here they have one of the marvels of the northern world. And what do they say of it? Caves, they say. Caves! Holes to fly to in a time of war. To store fodder in. My good Legolas. Do you know that the caverns of Helm's Deep are vast and beautiful? There would be an endless pilgrimage of dwarves merely to gaze at them if such things were known to be. Aye, indeed, they would pay pure gold just for a brief glance. And I would give gold to be excused, said Legolas, and double to be let out if I strayed in. You have not seen, so I forgive your jest, said Gimli. But you speak like a fool. Do you think those halls are fair, where your king dwells under the hill in Mirkwood, and dwarves helped in their making long ago? They are but hovels compared to the caverns I have seen here, immeasurable halls, filled with an everlasting music of water that tinkles into pools as fair Kelzaram in the starlight. And Legolas, when the torches are kindled and men walk on the sandy floors under the echoing domes, ah, then Legolas, gems and crystals and veins of precious ore glint in the polished walls and the light Flows through marbles, shell-like, translucent as the living hands of Queen Galadriel. There are columns of white and saffron and dawn rose like this, fluted and twisted into dreamlike forms. They spring up from many colored floors to meet the glistening pennants of the roof, wings, ropes, curtains fine as frozen clouds, spears, banners, pinnacles of suspended palaces. Still, lakes mirror them, a glimmering world looks up from dark pools covered with the clear glass. Cities such as the mind as Durin 
could scarce have imagined in his sleep. Stretch on through avenues and pillared courts, on into dark recesses where no light can come. And plink, a silver drop falls, and the round wrinkles in the glass make all the towers bend and waver like weeds and corals in a grotto of the sea. stare, and still the winding paths lead on into the mountain's heart. Caves! The caverns of Helm's Deep. Happy was the chance that drove me in there. It makes me weep to leave them. Then I wish you this fortune for your comfort, Gimli, said the elf, that you may come safe from war and return to see them again. But do not tell all your kindred. There seems little left for them to do. From your account, maybe the men of this land are wise to say little. One family of busy dwarves, hammer and chisel, might mar more than they made. You do not understand, said Gimli. No dwarf could be unmoved by such loveliness. None of Durin's race would mine those caves for stones or ore, not if diamonds and gold could be got there. Do you cut down groves of blossoming trees in the springtime for firewood? We would tend these glades of flowering stone, not quarry them with cautious skill, tap by tap, a small chip of rock and no more perhaps, in a whole anxious day, so we could work and as the years went by, we should open up new ways and display far chambers that are still dark. Glimpsed only as void beyond fissures in the rock. And lights, Legolas, we should make lights such lamps as once shone in Casa Doom, and when we wished, we would drive away the night that has lain there since the hills were made, and when we desired rest, we would let the night return.
So when I was building Helm's Deep here in the first place, I was looking for a location that had a really cool backdrop because I really love the idea of the glittering caves. You can't find a lot of references online. There's not a ton of pictures. Not a lot of people talk about them because there's just not a lot of content from Tolkien himself about it. We get some beautiful ideas and words written, but really the picture is just, the whole picture was just left to my imagination. So this is kind of my interpretation of it. I found this really cool mountain here in the background and I found out that it was a dripstone cave. So I decided to just forge my way through here, make a really cool cave entrance, and let's just go ahead, enough of my jabbering, let's just go ahead and take a look. So I worked on a cool entrance here, a little detail there to show you like, hey, there's some dripstone in here. Entryway here, the glittering caves of Aglarond. Actually, this area was originally known as Aglarond by the elves, and it wasn't later named Helm's Deep till the humans took over later. So cool little entryway here. I'm so proud of this place. I just dug a big hole and then I just kind of went with themes. Lots of barrels, the mine shaft uh, feel with all of the beams and stuff. Each different section I tried to uh, incorporate specific types of ores, you know, and make them look cool. So we start off with like a little lapis corner here. So I'm kind of making myself dizzy there. And as we head up this way a little bit, you get a redstone cave entrance here. Uh, I did it, had to go out and find a ton of dripstone because I didn't want to mine the dripstone that was inside because I wanted that to be available still. I did cool little veins of, of the amethyst just kind of running through here. Hit a nice little gold pocket down here. This is all well lit. I haven't seen anything spawn in here since I made it, but that doesn't mean anything. I really like this gold corner here. Some of the deep slate and some of the normal stone gold in there. Some of the uh, polished granite on the ground there with the dripstone. Oh, great textures. And as we head further down here, I try to throw little ideas, like little glimpses, like, oh, what are we coming up on here? Oh, there's a lot of copper. Cool copper corner. You know, some of it's already changed the colors because it's been discolored. We keep heading down here, more veins. And now this one took a little bit of time because as you know, this these emeralds are tough to find. They are super rare. I have not found any deep slate ones yet, which is a bummer, but for now, this is just one of my stashes. Head down this way a little bit further, and then kind of a uh, little quartz corner with a sea lantern. Some of the quartz blocks turn into quartz bricks for a little bit more texture there. And then a, an awesome iron section running through here. It was so much fun just being creative and decorating. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, baby. Come on now. I know you wanna. Casa Doom! And if we turn immediately to a side here. Oh, mama. Look at this room. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love it. It was hard not to fortune all these diamonds, but it was definitely worth it. Oh, don't look at that corner. Hold on. Do not look at that corner. Oh, much better. Okay, let's get out of here. Before I find something else and so as we head through this last part here we finally start heading into the actual cavern here which you guys saw me build in the time lapse but I'll kind of explain things as I go oh I did a lot of terraforming in here when I first got in it was kind of empty I built a bunch I try to fill out every corner so as you're walking through and you look through directions you're seeing stuff you're seeing different colors pop you know, it's a lot of brown, it's a lot of gray. I found a cool design online for these amethyst um, trees. Oh, so neat. I wish I had some more end rods. I would have made those pop a little bit more. 
little basic vegetation here around the sides. I built kind of like a gangplank walkway. Look over the corner, there's more trees. If you guys saw there, I built a river down through this whole thing. Oh, I'm so proud of this place. The dripstone looks really good. Coming around the corner here. I love that this little valley's out here. Kind of a, a really neat little look, but I'm thinking about covering it up with uh, some glass, maybe some tinted glass later. So we kept, keep heading down. We see another one of the trees, a lot more dripstone. And then over here on the left side, you see my one of my little handmade uh, amethyst geodes. I used some of the green accents around the outside with a sea lantern in the middle there. I really fell in love with that. I might do another one on the other side there. Let's see if I can do some parkour. Parkour. Oh, fail. Round two. Maybe higher parkour. Super high parkour. Oh, no. Double fail. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're back. I love this big tree down here. Some greenery just to add some extra pop. You can see over there a huge copper section there, just top to bottom, so much copper. And then as you turn the corner here, the bush is a little bit wide, but I really made this, should make this a little bit taller too, but I love this last little amethyst tree here. It kind of just finishes the gang, the gangway, the walkway here. And it just gives you just a cool little lookout space here to just take a look. I love this redstone section really proud of all this guys if you guys have any more ideas please let me know i wish i was trying to find some shaders to make all this stuff pop at the last minute but i just ran out of time and i think it looks uh, pretty good without them what do you guys think more amethyst more amethyst more more you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us for another episode of the Hobbit Minecraft Survival Guide. I had so much fun making this build. I had so much fun rereading the story, getting reacquainted with a kind of a, a little nonchalant part of the story, but it just feels so good and cozy. And uh, guys, thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button because there's some even bigger builds coming up soon. But until next time, a baggins out. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.